Okay, it's time for us to start. So we've given enough time for others to join us. And uh, I think it's best we start now. Like I promised, this is going to be a very, very short discussion. And I just want you to pay uh, very close attention to the things I'll be saying, because I'll be sharing experiences and uh, tips and tricks to help you become a better programmer. And yes, so we will get started and I'll be sharing my screen right away. Okay, just one more confirmation. If you can see my screen and you can see the text on the screen, please just give a thumbs up or a confirmation. Yes. All right, thank you very much. That's great. Okay, so good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're connecting from this beautiful globe. I'm excited that you are here today to join me in this talk. And I'll try to keep this as short as possible and be very interactive. And also, I'm really excited for the opportunity to be here with you guys. And also a very big special thanks to the Code Mentor Events team for making this a possibility. Uh, I'll be talking today about the topic, the self-taught programmer's pathway. And uh, this is a topic that has really impacted a lot of us in our journey at one point in time. So um, this talk is going to be for aspiring programmers, um, tech enthusiasts, career switchers, and uh, generally people who are looking for a way to get into tech and are still you know, contemplating on how to get about it and what are the necessary things they need, what it's going to be like, and eventually what should they do, OK? So uh, very quickly, I'm going to be giving an overview of what I'll be talking about. And uh, that will be a discussion about what self-taught programming really is, uh, setting a clear goal and developing a learning plan, and also the importance of doing this. We're also going to be talking about uh, strategies for staying motivated and overcoming obstacles, and also strategies for becoming successful at this. Also, we're going to be talking about essential tools and learning resources. So these are the key three things we're going to be discussing about. And the fourth one is a personal case study from my own sharing experiences. And of course, I will be given a space for Q&A later at the end of the talk. OK, so you might be wondering who am I? I can suspect that most of you do this by now. My name is Precious Adenka. I'm based in Nigeria. and I'm software engineer at SD Global Systems. And uh, yeah, I also do technical writing and for talks like this at boot camps, code camps. Uh, I do mentor students in spare time. I teach a lot of people, both private and in groups. And uh, this is done as a way for me to push forward the things that I've learned along the way. I've also had help at some point in my life, in my journey, and I want to push it forward. And so you can do do the same as well to so whomever you can journey. Okay, so you can reach out to me with any of the social media channels below. I, like I said before, I'm glad, really glad to help you. Please do not hesitate if you have any questions or um, challenges or obstacles. I do get messages like that from time to time. I do my best to reply. So uh, that is it for now. So thank you for um, your attention. Once again, we're about to get started. Okay, so the next thing we'll be talking about is self-taught programming. What is it and what do you care? And how does this really differ from the traditional educational system? So basically, um, self-taught programming is uh, the process of learning and acquiring programming skills without a formal education or a traditional classroom with a setting where you have structured learning materials, curriculums. Programmers do typically rely on online resources like tutorials, books, hands-on practice to develop their programming skills and expertise, and also to be able to demonstrate um, uh, knowledge and proficiency in a particular area of study. They take the initiative to learn frameworks, uh, tools, technologies, often leveraging online communities and self-paced learning platforms to pursue their passion for coding in, a, in, a, in an attempt to become a software engineer, a programmer, a front-end developer, back-end engineer, cloud developer, whatever it may be. And this very well differs from the traditional educational system where you can have a degree in uh, computer science, for example, which involves you being in classrooms, 
getting hours of boring lectures, <laughs> which you probably would never use. But this whole thing just gives you an idea of what technology is all about, computer science specifically, and also gives you a very wide overview on things that you should be able to know and that you will require in your journey. It involves classroom instructions, you have access to instructors, professors, uh, libraries where you can go and learn in your quiet time. So it's also very important that it is deadline based, it's time based, it's also paced but very limited. And also you have um, access to credentials and recognitions for your hard work and uh, eventually your degree which you'll be get getting at the end of your um, <clears throat> degree program. Uh, very importantly, one thing that actually um, is a big challenge for a lot of people when it comes to traditional education cost. Cost is a very big deal. A lot of uh, top universities in the world require a lot of you know, cash, which a lot of people don't have to pay for tuition, uh, study materials, uh, accommodation, and so many things, especially for international students, right? So um, this is usually how uh, a lot of people find themselves in situations where they're looking alternative ways to become a programmer and pursue their passion without necessarily having to go through the traditional pathway. Okay, um, so uh, I will also be giving you three general steps that we're talking about mainly in this particular um, talk today. So the first step is you would need to set goals and develop a learning plan for those goals, right? The second step is to stay motivated through your um, goals and and overcoming the obstacles and challenges which you will face along the way. And uh, the third thing is you would have to get access to learning resource tools that will help you get up to speed with um, the, the journey that you have actually laid out. Uh, very, very important is that a, a journey to learn a particular mental journey, and it's something that requires your time, your effort, your resources. But uh, you see, in, in the area where you have to do this by yourself is where it gets interesting because it comes with its own experience and it brings out that true entrepreneur in you, really. And this is why it's a, it has been quite a rough but still interesting pathway for me. And I'll be sharing some of those experiences as well with you. Okay, so before we go ahead, I want to just um, give a simple um, um, uh, thing that we should take note of. The simple things are usually the hardest things. And this is because it takes a, a, a lot to actually do simple I have come to realize that. And most people don't usually get it, but it is true. Uh, the simple things usually are the things that stand you out. It's just like an employer telling you, why should we hire you? It's not about uh, what you can do. You get anybody that literally could do that. It's about those simple things that really stand you out. And I'll be giving a little um, explanation in detail to how this works if time permits me okay and also very very importantly is the two things that matter uh, the first word is how and the second word is why you see the thing is a lot of people go into programming with a mindset of um how how is basically implementation why is um, concept understanding so you should be focused more on the why and not the how and let me explain this to you this is because um when you focus too much on implementation, all you really know is implementation. But when you focus on the why, which is the understanding, you will be able to get the implementation correctly. If you understand why you're doing what you're doing, you would definitely know how to do it, or you would have some best guesses on how to do it. You have informed decisions on how to do it. And this really just boils down to the fact that a lot of people spend time learning syntax, learning implementation in several languages, programming languages. It really doesn't matter the programming language you get started with. My first programming language was C, and uh, I couldn't further it because at the point in time, I did not have the resources to, you know, pursue it further. I spent more time learning about the why. Why do we do this? What is program? How does this apply to the real world? What can I do with this? You know, so those are the things that really matter to me because that is really what actually stuck with me today. I can tell, tell you for free, I have forgotten a lot of syntax and so many things because there are those resources for you always go out there and you know browse those things and eventually get it. The thing is, when you focus on the why, the how becomes a part of you over time. You don't have to focus on syntax. When you focus on problem solving, which should be your number one reason why you want to be a programmer because you solve problems. 
if a client reaches out to you and says, please get me a website for my business, that is a problem. How do you solve this problem is really what actually matters. Every client is unique and you have to be able to cater to every client at their point of need. So you are writing a story. You're like an author with books and unique stories with zeros and ones. So you have to write your story in the way that suits the solution that will cater to their specific need. You're solving the problem of SEO, visibility, searchability for their business, um, revenue, traffic generation, and so many things. So you are essentially a program over. You're not just a programmer because the name is really fancy. You are there because you're a problem solver. You're there to solve of problems so have this understanding of the why because it will help you to own things better and the reason is because drop you in any, in any situation you have an idea of what to do this also uh, spreads out to job applications and recruitment most times in my experiences when i have actually had experiences uh recruit for a particular job or offer a contract i get asked uh, you know at, at the bigger level you, the things that you do don't really matter they have engineers that could really be, be be doing this in their sleep, right? But they want to understand why you did. Why is uh, one time I was in a uh, interview with a Facebook uh, uh, recruiter, and he gave me a couple of tasks. He was like, uh, "I have this for you. Go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do that." And I was uh, giving it my best shot. I said I didn't have a lot of experiences, but eventually I got into the interview, and he asked me to do a couple of things. So. Over time, he realized that uh, the time he allotted me was passing by, and then he asked me, um, now I'd like you to stop and also explain to me why you did this, why you did that, why this was the reason you did this and all. Because the implementation is not a problem. The understanding is really what matters. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? The difference between a junior programmer and a senior a programmer is the fact that a junior programmer's code might work in development and not scale in production. Now, the difference between a senior programmer is the fact that their code will probably scale in production because they know the why behind what they do, why this code would not work. There are algorithm efficiency, asymptotic analysis, and so many other things that are factors that are important in making this code work efficiently to solve the solution in which it was assigned to. So these are very important things. So Please take note of um, these very important things. Okay, so without out of the way, let us get started in um, this journey. So when you're starting out a new topic, the first thing is to set those goals and develop a learning plan to follow through with them. It just comes up with a decision to learn Linux at some point. I decided that it was really hard. And don't let no one uh, deceive you. Programming is really hard, but one thing it is not is impossible. It is not, it's, it's not impossible, it's very possible, but it is hard. Yes, I can tell you that for free. You know, so the difference, the, the, the distance between what you want and what you want to do is just that decision you need to make. You need to take a leap of faith. The leap of faith is what differentiates you from the person that has been making that premises to himself that I will get started, I will get started, I will get started. You are right there in it. It doesn't work out for you. You, you are in the storm, it doesn't seem like anything is working, you don't understand anything you're seeing currently, that is okay. Your brain has seen something it is not used to, it will eventually actualize. You will come to a realization of what you're doing. Just stay on it for so long, you eventually get uh, a sense of what you're doing. And that is why consistency matters a lot. So it comes about a mindset shift. I want to do this and uh, I want to get started. So it's a matter of start it early and start it fast. You know, I want to do this, get started doing it. Don't waste any more time. I want to do this, get started. Now, that brings you ahead of most people who are still making decisions. And one thing they don't realize is time is actually passing by and they don't have all the time in the world to make all that decision. So you start with the decision of this is what I want to do. I really want this. I believe it's possible. Do not let that mindset barrier keep you away from you know achieving those things you want to, to go after it. This is what I want to do and this is how much I really want. Want it. All of enthusiasm will push you towards a successful end, I promise you. So you have to start with making a decision. It's really about your mindset and starting with the end in mind. You know, you can't have passion for what you don't know. You can't have passion for what you haven't seen. So you have to see where you're going. This is what I want to be. If you have to go online to search people who are doing similar things to see the lifestyle they're living, the things they have access to, and what really matters, that is your end goal. That is what you see. That's what you want to do.
be like eventually. So you have to start with that in mind. This is what I want to be. Envision that every day. Put up a cardboard paper in the walls of your room to teach you to yourself every day that this is what I want to do. Eventually, this will be a lot of sense. Okay, so now that you've actually goals, you have to develop the learning plan to stick with those goals. You see, you cannot just become a programmer overnight because uh, so you that you can. This is what is not realistic is someone tell you that you program in six months get a jump in a fan company that is i'm gonna tell you it is most likely a lie because you see it doesn't work with everyone the same way some people take uh, lesser years to learn some people take lesser days to learn it's not the same for everybody there are different uh situations and uh circumstances around everybody so don't 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 not compare yourself to other people and also don't be in a haste programming is something that takes time you don't become good overnight you have to take it step by step eventually it will make sense and the moment it clicks you can apply that same knowledge to any programming language the truth is all programming languages have the same fundamentals so you have to know what you're learning and learn it really well no matter how high a skyscraper is if the foundations are not strong it will come in one day so you have to build on your foundation this is where you spend a lot a lot of people tell me i've been learning for five years now and i still can't find where i am at i'm like your foundation was actually wrong you spent too much time trying to dabble into so many things and then eventually you didn't really learn anything you just learned a lot of everything which doesn't amount to anything so about taking those tutorials because you eventually find yourself in a situation of tutorial purgatory, which is when you have a, an end the loop of tutorial hell and you just need tutorials and tutorials. And if you're asked to do something, you have to do it based on a tutorial on YouTube. You can't really uh, creatively come up with solutions by yourself. And that is where, where or what the real problem solving is all about. Sometimes you have to take your paper and take your, your pen and just sit down and creatively think of a solution. Think of a way out of this. It's like you're dropped in a black room and, you know, you have no way out and you're told to escape. That is how it is. So um, setting those learning plans will help you have a blueprint of what you like saying. I want to go to the top of Mount Everest. Where do I need to go? This is the place where I have to get to. I have to take, I have to ride a bike up this hill. I have to take this. So it's like checkpoints of uh, what stages you will be at at every point in time. So eventually you want to be a software engineer. You didn't just become a software engineer. You have to first become a novice. Yeah, you have to first become a fin engineer or client side engineer. You have to become a back end engineer. Then you have to know how to couple the both together. You have to learn a bit of design. You have to love version control system, uh, networking, um, engineering, and operations, and so many little details that really matter along the way. So those learning plans will help you properly have a blueprint of what to follow. If you don't have a plan of what to follow, then there is not much you can do, actually. So it is like building a, building a, a, a beautiful monument, right? You have to follow a path. You have to follow a path there. That is where the learning plan comes in. So you have a goal in mind. The learning plan helps you have an idea of what you should do. And that is why people have roadmaps. And I keep telling people, roadmaps keep getting complex and complex over time. But what you need to understand is you want to become, for example, a web developer. All that matters is just three standards that the W3C has actually standardized. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's all that matters right? Any other frameworks, any other tool depends on these three things. And you need to know them really well to even understand what happens behind the frameworks you use. So stop spending time learning frameworks. Uh, yes, there will be a link for the recording. Yes. Okay. So stop learning, uh, spending time learning too much of frameworks and the things that are huge. Remember, I said something to start that the simple things matters, right? The simple things matter. And those are the things that you need to spend time on doing you need to build your foundation really well so learn simple things about html html tags how to make sure your html links are not being tagged by robots yes i will also be providing the slides thank you very much also um these are the matter the simple things are usually the hardest things a lot of people skip the simple things a lot of people skip the simple things and they go on to the hard things i want to build this calculator application i want to build this e-commerce website i want to make it so fine that the employer is going to miss me that is all good but learn the very same things now while other people are learning the big things you're learning the simple things that will make you great trust me this is what i can tell you for free i've been doing this for over five years and oh my god you can't hear me clearly
Is there another person having the same issue? Can you all hear me? Please drop a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly. Okay, okay. Uh, please maybe try and uh, you change your uh, headset or something. So maybe that's might be the problem. Okay, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. That's good, David. Okay, so um, going forward, you need to learn the simple things that really matter that helps you become the giant in whatever you do. When you learn the simple, you're around people who talk big talks, who say big things. The little things are the things that will actually set you apart. The little things are what is going to make something to you. And I'm going to give you a simple instance. For example, when we get to uh, the third part of learning resources, I'm going to give you a simple uh, scenario of what happened to me and you know how those little things have really helped me in so many ways. I'm, I'm going to tell you the reason for my success is not because I'm the best. I, I will tell you for free, there are a lot of people that are better than little things are what I focus on. I don't play with the little things. The little things matter a lot to me because those are the things people don't pay attention to. It's very, very easy to skip the minute details, the things that don't matter, the the the, the details that don't matter. Anyways, I can learn it later. It's what you hear. I take my time to learn that and know why I'm doing that. Okay. So give attention to concepts and not implementation. Implementation becomes a part. The syntax of how to write a prime number checker in JavaScript will become a part of you over time. But you don't go, this is what I want to learn. You learn how. OK, first, what are prime numbers? What is the logic behind prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that have one and blah, blah, blah. You have to understand the why, not just how to do that in JavaScript and just cram it and go to an interview and just pass it. And then you get into the job, and then you find yourself in a, <laughs> a very serious situation. OK, so remember, have a goal and have a learning plan alongside very importantly. So uh, moving on, we're going to be talking about strategies for staying motivated and focused through this learning plan. You will definitely face challenge. That is a must. It's inevitable. In fact, you need to embrace those challenges. You have to come to a level where you learn how to embrace challenges. I like to tell myself my errors are actually uh, talking to me. So if you're having a lot of errors, you should be happy. You get to a point in programming where you would not be getting errors, which in this case is called semantic errors, errors that literally show you anything on the screen telling you where the error is, but it's just not working, right? I appreciate seeing errors because error is a, a proof of and I do a solid work, right? So you should embrace errors, embrace criticism, embrace um, not getting productive, the things that build you. Because when you when you overcome those challenges now, you drop you anywhere, in any country, in any situation, in any place, you will succeed at what you're doing. You will succeed at what you're doing, right? That is just the beauty of it. People don't give attention to this thing, I tell you. I can tell you for free. I have a lot of friends in several companies. I've met a lot of, I've talked to a lot of people. And I tell you, the little details are not there. Those are the things that actually make me successful in so many things that I do. Not because I have everything. I don't have things, but I can tell you the things I have are the little details. And those things, they stay with me because I spent a lot of time learning them and becoming a part of them. So much that I recite them and tell it to anybody. I can break down the little details to you in a way you only. So much that it becomes a part of you. And the beautiful thing about programming and those little details is the fact that they are applicable beyond the scope of beyond the scope of programming or computers or technology they're applicable to your life these has personally improved my life in so many ways just for example like i was saying you want to be a programmer but you have to start with the little steps get a learning plan set up a goal but then you need to have that little detail that tells you this is what you need to do this is how you need to get there this is what directs you this is what gives you the information to make the decision that you need, see that what you do. All right. So stay motivated is very important. And one of the things that can actually help you stay motivated in your journey is first of all, time management. A lot of us have 24 hours in a day. <laughs> I think all of us do have 24 hours in a day, right? So we all have 24 hours in a day, and 24 hours is all you get. That's it. so you have to manage that time better. Now I'll say this: there are two types of nine to fives: the 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. There is the 9 a.m. to 5, so you have to choose your 9 to 5 real well, okay? So listen to that again. There is the 9 a.m. to the 5 p.m. There is the 9 p.m. to the 5, so you have to choose your 9 to 5 correctly. Know which one works for you. For me, times while I was growing up, I did not have 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. time because I'd use that 
for schoolwork and so many other things. Right? So the 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. was my 9 to 5. That were the things that built me. Those were the times where I was studying. Those were the times I did the things that matter. Those were the times I built me. I became a version of me that I never expected I could be. Right. So you have to choose wisely the time. So time management is important. You have to stay motivated and focused. And I find out that uh, personally, being in that you know space where there are no distractions, everybody's sleeping. When I get the motivation I need, I keep telling myself, everybody's sleeping. I'm doing this. It's gonna pay up. It's gonna pay up one day. That is my motivation. I keep chatting myself on that mantra. It's gonna pay up. I'll be good at this. I'll get better at this. Those days, I did not understand what I was doing. I would get to the part where I'm going to be sharing you my personal experiences and details and the things that I actually did that is going to blow your mind away. So it's not about me coming from a rich family, a developing country, and I'm from an average family. So this can work for you the same way it can work for me. So if your situations are better, like us, you're going to run with this as fast as anybody can. Because one of the things I didn't have growing up was opportunity. If I had an opportunity, Opportunities, I would be doing a whole lot more by now, but I'm glad for where I am right now because that is what matters. Then that's why I'm able to stay here uh, in front of you and to speak and to help as much people as I can and to share the same message and for others. Okay, so you need to stay fixed on your goals. Time management, very important. Learn how to manage your time better because time management will help you to manage stress better because programming is an art where you will be frustrated a lot of times. Trust me, you'll be frustrated. So if you have anger issues just get ready get anger issues pro because you will get angry a lot sometimes a simple semicolon can make your program you know break up for weeks and you're just figuring it out and a lot of eyes have actually looked at it but you can't figure it out okay so um going forward uh the other other thing you need to know about a consistent yeah, I keep saying it, it works uh, with time because when you have the time that you, uh, I see a lot of you dropping uh, questions in Q&A, uh, we'll attend to that shortly, uh, but please for now, just uh, let me complete this section. Thank you. Okay, so the, the consistency works alongside with time and when you're consistent at what you do, trust me, this will put you in a position where you can do, do the little things consistently that way among big things. Now, simple things matter. Remember, I always have that thing coming up, simple things. It's very easy to start a, a workout in a day. I'm going to do 100 today. And you could actually do 100. You give her everything you've got and you do 100 today. You're not going to be able to do 100 tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that, I promise you. But you can do one or five for every single day. And that is the little details that matter. And that builds up into 365 days of one put up every day every day you have to do just one every day that's all that matters you will find that a lot of people cannot actually keep up with the simple things rather somebody would actually do a hundred and win the guinness world record for that but that one day every day is the consistency and that is where winners are actually being recognized so you have to stay consistent in it so whatever it takes whatever could be your own reason so you have to provoke yourself to do that my reason where i was from an average family or from a developing country i needed to be better i needed to be bigger i needed to be big beyond the circumstances that were surrounding me as a child as a teenager so i needed to go far beyond all of that i was way ahead and i was thinking things that my mates would not think. I was seeing the future because of the situation. So whatever is your situation, that should provoke you to do the things that matter a lot to you, okay? So uh, another thing you need to keep your of is um, networking. You have to network with artists. There are a lot of people that are in the same situation like you are right now. They need to know um, uh, you're, there's somebody out there experiencing the same thing as they are, so you want to be be able to say hi this is what i'm doing this is what i'm working on would you like to be a partner we give ourselves accountability doing this and that you set up a notion board and then you just keep helping each other checking up and each every day checking your progress and doing it yourself do, do your own research do your own work do your assignments right so you get started step by step network with artists go to events meet people people asking for help is not a weakness people it is a strength it takes a lot of strength to ask for help because you're putting yourself on a low level to you know push the person in you asking the help for at a higher level that is a lot of humility right there okay so uh it says my voice is lagging can you hear me loud and clear please 
I'm, I'm, I think this probably should be a network issue. Okay, I think you can hear me loud. Uh, no lagging. Okay, please um, just change that work, maybe, please. Thank you. Okay, so uh, going forward, we have to network with other people. We have to be in a place where we can tell others, this is what I do. Trust me, I've met a lot of different amazing people. We are still friends with days through networking. Networking is very, very important, people. Do not take that for granted. The people you network with are your assets. Read it again. People you network with are your assets. The people they know are also your assets. So you have your inner circle and the circle of, of your inner circles, right? Okay. Um, forward, I think um, I'm hearing the sound. Can you all see him? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Where is that sound from? Okay, okay. I think that's just a glitch in the the network. Okay, please. Going forward, um, remember, first thing is time management. The second thing is consistency. And the third one is actually networking. You have to network with people. This will help you boost your motivation. Like they say, two is better than one. If you set out to jog every three days in a week, if you're doing it by yourself, this is how far you can go. With someone else, you can go really far. Okay? So do not do this alone and don't think you're the only one in this whole world of over 8 billion people that is a particular situation you can get help and you should get help okay so uh moving forward uh i want you to also um know that you cannot just do this by um just going randomly to learn things you have to have a structure to it okay so you need the proper learning tools and the resources to help you uh, 10x what you're doing. You see, the thing is, you are using a uh, an outdated uh, resource, and that might actually set you back. And if you're using a, a very updated resource, that might be you 10 years ahead, two weeks ahead, five years ahead. So the tools you use and the resources you use matter a lot. It's like cheat. It's like cheat sheets in 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 games. It's like a cheat code. So you have a cheat code to get all the coins that you can in a particular game that is why the right tools help you become more productive the right tools can put you two years ahead right it was like when chat gpt became a thing it's really blew our minds why right? because chat gpt is here as a super duper productivity tool you can learn programming with chat gpt you don't really have to go through hundreds of articles and different you know resources to learn how this works how that works or read a, a five-hour article you could just Go and ask ChatGPT, and it will give you really uh, simple details that you can understand. And you can ask to break it down further and further. And that is prompting here, right? So uh, the resources help you to uh, connect what you're doing. So I'll be providing you some resources that I've used in my own personal journey, going uh, from no, absolutely nothing about programming to becoming really good about programming. And I, I've been able to. Uh, gain uh, knowledge and experience in several like i said my first language was c then i couldn't uh, uh continue because i did not have the resources if you know c too well you know it requires compilation it requires a printer it requires a specific type of ide and all of those i i didn't have a phone by that time i didn't have a laptop i was usually coding with my head and books and pen. And I'll be sharing all the story with you in a few minutes time. And also coming to the conclusion of this. So please also know that consistency matters a lot in whatever you're doing. So if you set your goals right and you are able to come to the place where you can uh, set up a learning plan for what you're doing and priority matter every Everything matters is what I keep telling people, but you have to put it as the priority, right? So everything matters. Watching movies matters, actually. Having fun matters. Uh, matter. Learning matters. So every is your 9 to 5, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So choose the time. You only have 24 hours and that's it. So you have to do what matters every day. Every day cannot be passing by and shouldn't be. What I used to do back in the days when I allocated two to three hours and I learned something every day. I still do it date. 
I allocate a few time and I start learning something new every day. Be it a new language, be it a new talk, be it a new textbook or anything. You might be wondering why there might be a gap in self-taught programming and the traditional is because that uh, there is a structure, but there is no structure in the self-taught programming pathway and you know the way to actually go ahead and overcome this obstacle that were in cities so i'd go and ask them for their resources so i was literally reading their years while they were going through the course sometimes i even help them with their assignments right interesting because i had more time to read I have no deadline nobody checking on me to say submit your assignments assignments due thursday no i had all the time on the world but i was using it to learn so i was reading test books that you know universities where literally those resources with me and I'll read and gain ideas. So I had the university experience even before I started. And remember I said I was going to give you a very important information uh, towards the end of this and I still will, okay? And uh, what will shock a lot of you like that, I just uh, graduated from my associate degree in computer science. Interesting, right? So, but because uh, I've been learning programming so I, I decided because I didn't have a way to further my education. So I decided to, you know what, let me just learn something. Let me use this years to build my life. And, you know, I was, I've attended many schools and some I couldn't stay because I knew more than the lecturers that were teaching, you know, and I was no longer wanted to be in a place where I did not know more than who was teaching me. I wanted to learn of the things that mattered, right? The simple things like getting resources from friends that were already in school and learning those things I had. By the time I got to school, I was blown an A plus and I was just going like that because I literally had experienced everything they were teaching. So there was nothing you were teaching that I didn't know. So it was easy peasy for me. So the time that I had, I utilized them very well to make sure I improve and learn the things that matter, the simple details that matter to help me 10X. Remember I said it to put you years ahead and that's the truth. So by the time I got to school, I was years ahead and people were literally you know, taking notes and getting things for me. and to me, I'm just wondering that this is a result of what I did. So no matter what happens now, it's a result of what I did. I put in this work. I did this assignment. So I'm getting the results now. Okay? So very, very importantly, understand those very little things that will help you become the uh, different person from the crowd. And this has all been the situation even back in high school. I was the person who would do things different. If everybody were drawing diagrams in the biology classes and weren't labeling them, you'd always find me label them out it properly so you could always expect to see the different little things that matter in my work and that has been the major key or recipe for my success that's it that's the end of the talk really it's just simple, the simple things that no one else is looking people have this tendency to always deviate to the part where a lot of people are going like ants covering sugar you have to just step back reflect and see where is nobody going so the two people that matter the people that see the things that are I say, whoa, those are nice. And the people see the things that are not, and I say, why can't we have them? Yeah, I mean, the other group. So you have to know how to reflect, step back, and see, okay, these are the things that people aren't doing. How can I do them? Where do I find the resources to do them? How can I set the goals? I set the learning plan. I stay motivated. I overcome all the obstacles I will face, definitely because you will face them. And then I have the right tools and resources to go ahead and learn this well. Okay, so these are resources categorized on uh, varying aspects like learning. So online like Coursera, Udemy, EDX. EDX was the place I was taking a course back then. Uh, I was learning C programming. I was taking this very popular CS50 course. I'm sure you've heard about it. CS50, so the basic about programming, arrays and you know pointers and so many weird things. Code Academy has also been then. Pluralsight, uh, Khan Academy, Another one, the View 3 school, and a lot of these websites have changed over years because what they used to be are no longer what they are right now. So you have the advantage of the advancement that they've actually come to to actually utilize those things to put you years, years ahead. And also I'll be giving a little uh, uh, advice towards the end of this talk telling people learn these things a lot of people are coming to the ai era and they'll be like should i still learn these things who will be programming the ais you are going to be the people programming this AI. so you need a function to be able to go for that so that's just a sneak peek i have programming tutorials from mdn stack overflow free code camp 
GitHub, Lead Code, HackerRank, Project Euler. So there are a lot of rare resources out there, but I cannot possibly list them all out here. Another very important one is Geeks for Geeks, GFG, right? Geeks for Geeks. And those are very, very good resources where you can learn years of experiences from other people who write tutorials, share their experiences, and give you really keen details on what really matters, how to do the implementation aspect, right? So, but you have to do the work of learning the why. The implementation is always there. There are a lot of people willing to share and talk to you about them if you just simply ask. Okay, the next section is networking. You have to work. You cannot do this alone. Don't always go with the Sigma thingy that has been blowing up over the internet. You're a Sigma male, yes, we know. But you have to ask for help. Sigmas ask for help. You have to know when to look for help, okay? You have to know when to ask for help. Stop being a Sigma male. Calm down and really ask for help. Being a Sigma male is to start from a humble beginning, right? So you have to learn how to calm down and really ask for help. So stop going to programming. It really doesn't add up, right? So uh, you have to know how to network. And if it takes a lot of skills. I'm a serious introvert. I didn't know how to talk to people. You know, I had to learn it consciously. So if you're like me and your heartedness is really chronic, then talk to me after these. I tell you some of the thoughts to me, right? How I could then be talking to another of over 180 people and even more in uh, both offline and you know environments. So please take time to network with people. Don't worry about get crashing. Don't worry about talking to people. The best they're going to tell you is, I don't want you to come into my DMs. And you apologize humbly and politely and get the hell out of the DMs, right? But you should be able to professionally network with people. In a company environment, a corporate environment, you learn how to network with your client, with your project manager, with your senior engineer, with everybody. So if you don't learn it now, it's a skill that will actually be missing by the time you get to the top. So you have to learn it. Remember, the simple details matter. So on places like LinkedIn, Dev.to, so many sub um, communities and developer groups all around the world, which I have created a couple myself, we take networking very important because that is all we do. We network every day. We have to network to know people for people to know us. Remember, it's a two-way thing. People have to know you. That is why I'm here. I want you to know that I exist. I want you to know that, yes, here I am. Because remember, it's not just about meeting other people. Other people have to meet you. You are someone with talent and important information to share to others. I have come to realize this. I can tell you for free that the things you know are not little. Do not make that mistake that I just know is little stuff. No, what you know is a lot. And there are so many people in the world that wish they knew what you did. So don't take it for granted. So you have to come up to that realization, step up to the game to know that I've got something to share and I've got a lot to learn as well. So remember, always learn to network. So these resources, I'll be providing the slide, yes, of course, will help you in networking. And um, okay, the next thing is career. This is one area where a lot of us really would like because this deals with money, right? Everybody needs money some way or the other, right? So job search, tech industries, uh, newsletter and you know, publication writing, like TechCrunch, Hacker News, Medium. I've written for a, a couple of publications in Medium as well. And also books that you can use, uh, like uh, I think the most popular one is Aureli Media, right? So CS50, Harvard. I've taken courses from Stanford University on algorithms and the coloring uh, aspect of algorithm as well. On the uh, MOOC, uh, that's the Massive Online Open Course Softwares, right? So you could really go on those places and take structured courses from universities that are free. Another is the Open Learning University out there that you can actually use to learn a lot of things. So career based, most people want a job, but you see the thing that I want to give as a, an advice here is learning public. One of the things that I might say might be a regret is I did to the private. And uh, by the time I was out of my dream, I realized that the world has actually passed by. It wasn't about me knowing. It's about somebody knowing you can, it's about somebody noticing you. People actually watch you. That's what you don't realize. I've talked with some top programmers in the toppest top fields, and they've told me the same thing. I literally reached out to them on platforms like Polywork and I asked for advice, asked for just a short session, and which they gracefully gave, right? Some are paid, some are free. Okay, so you be told the same thing. You have to know people. I can tell you this, 60% that are assigned in companies are all happening within the companies. They never get to the job 
backwards. Okay, maybe about 40%. That's the truth. Because if I have a job and I have a friend, who do you think I'm going to recommend to the company I work with? My friend, of course. So 60% of the job happens just like that. So you need to know people. Know people sometimes. I reach out not to tech recruiters, not to CEOs. I reach out to engineers in that company. I make friends with them. I, I share resources with them, help them if I can in any way, because I want to get to know them at that level. That is how you eventually there is a job. Hey, Amen. There's a job. Would you like to? Yes, I am. That's it. The job is gone. It's gone. You're given the job, right? So, and this is where also open source comes in. You meet a lot of people like that through open source. I, I contributed to... Um, auto deal during October 1st. And I met a lot of people then that were willing to you know, get me on board into what they do because I really was contributing and I was making an impact in what they do and they liked it. They were rolling out the second feature. I think it was a machine learning model based uh, project. And I helped out in some very, very, very important things. And they were really happy from, I literally helped them through a full feature until they blow it out. Okay, so uh, and also another thing is in order to get, you know, career aspect. And remember, I'm not telling you go ahead, apply to 1,000 jobs in a day. Those things are old, right? You have to use the unconventional ways. Remember, those little things that nobody's doing, those things that people are not doing. Most of the, the job I am at right now came through a call. Hi, somebody gave me your number and I'd like to talk to you. Okay, fine. Can we schedule a meeting? That was it. And then the job. I did not have this job. I don't know they existed anytime, any day, right? So. These are the things that I do that matter a lot. Remember, go to a community, talk to people, be social in a social community, right? I went to a community one, one time, less than a week when I got into the community, I built them a chat board. I listened to the problems that people were having. And over time, I said, what can I do about it? It's okay, I'm a problem solver. What can I do? Nobody was doing anything about it. We had a lot of good programmers in the group, but I was the one doing those little things that matter. Everybody complains about it. Then we laugh and then we move. And I was like, okay, fine. Over a weekend, I built a chatbot what, that automated everything. They were blown away and instantly my recognition skyrocketed. They gave me coins and so many things like that. So those little things that nobody is even looking at, nobody's checking, we actually create a space for you at the top. People, this is what you need to do. You don't have to spend hours and hours applying to jobs. Eight years, we keep blocking you. You have to get through the unconventional way. There are so many assets to the go right you, you can fly there you can go through c you can go by road but you will get there eventually so whatever pathway you're using is what determines how you get there usually i like going from the top because you just get right there okay so uh those things will help you go for events i don't know how many of you attended figma config i went to events and i met like three people today that was before i came to prepare for my talk i met three people and uh, we really met and funny enough we we lived around the same city very funny, right? So you have to network. Those kind of people will tell you about job opportunities, about information that you otherwise wouldn't know how you'd have gotten it if you weren't in their circle. So you keep an eye out for those kind of people. There are people that will still do come into your DM on LinkedIn and be like, I just want to connect with you. I'm like, that's fine. We can talk. And sometimes I do it as well. So there, there is no holding you back. There's no one saying, don't do this. Sometimes you could enter a rec recruiter's DM and say, hi, I'm open to responsibilities. Uh, I'm open to opportunities, I mean, and uh, I'd like to take on offers or contracts. If you have any information, I'd be really happy to you know, get started and discuss them with you. Ask for information I interview. Ask for your company. Many times I've, I've wanted to you know, apply to a company and I met the engineers and they were like, Thank God you actually asked me about this. The engineer gave me specific details on what to do. I was mind blown. That was how I actually even got uh, a interview with one of the top persons in the you know technology department. So you reach out to people. They help you in a group. You become you know useful. Find a way to help out. Find something to do there. Find a way to be important and you know relevant to the people that are there. They will be relevant back to you, I promise you. It is karma. It's in a 218. You communicate back to them, you will get a response, okay? So those are career resources that will help you. Now, there are extra things that help you with collaboration, like Discord communities, Reddit, spend time going on this platform, just scroll it around. Sometimes you find me going around these communities, just answering questions, writing answers, and five years down the line, somebody reached me and says, oh, I saw one of your posts about five years ago. I just needed a way to solve this specific problem that you answered. I'm having the same problem. I need to get a way to go over. I'm like, okay, 
this is how it's going, this is how it's going to be, and everything. And then we, we, we have a solution eventually. So there are popular places where you can learn, like YouTube, Traversing Media, uh, Code Newbie, Free Code Camp. These are very popular resources that are at your beck and call. You just have to use them, really. Okay? So these tools will help you become, you know, the person you want to be. And, you know, over time, this self programming programming's pathway has begun to gain more structure, small structure. So you don't have everything just scattered everywhere around the place. You have structure. And these tools, like FreeCodeCamp has structured courses that you can take online, one pace, but yet it's, you're still self-taught, right? Uh, the big the, the places where I used at some point were Udacity. I, I won a scholarship with Google where, the, you know, it was a Google Africa Scholarship Award. And I was part of the people they shortlisted. I literally left my home to go and answer my calling. My calling was to be a programmer. I left home to do that. Sometimes you have to take a risk to be successful. If you're a kind of person where you can't take risks, it's going to be hard to leave where you are currently, especially when a lot of odds are against you. You have to leave where you are. Trust me, people, you cannot be where you are and make it. You have to leave where you are. I had to leave home literally was leaving the office of someone I actually knew. I spent two weeks there, two weeks in the office. I had just few clothes. I rotate them over and over. I needed to do something. I needed to cook something. I needed to get out of something. I needed to get something. That brought me a lot of fame. That brought me a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, a lot of networks that I, I am in on to date and that still just makes me who I am. That is the moment where I was building. People don't understand is you can take calculated risk, but not taking risk at all will be a regret later in the future. So take risk, people, take risk, but calculate the risk. Don't go blindly into something and say, take risk, everybody, let's do this. No, that's not what I'm telling you to do. Calculate the risk and take it carefully and quietly. Let it count. This is a risk that you're willing to put. This is one thing I love entrepreneurship for. You put in a lot of effort, resources, and time into something that eventually might not work. But eventually, you dust it off and say, let's try the next thing, right? That is how you should be, that entrepreneur you know, personnel, that gold in you has to shine, you know. So um, learn how to interact with people, learn how to, you know, give yourself the benefit of doubt, give yourself the platform to improve, to grow. You're one of your biggest back, uh, you're one of your biggest setbacks, really. If, if you just take that leap in your mind that I want to do this, okay, this is how I'm going to do this. This is my plan. This is my plan to take over the world. This is what I have to do. You set those plans. I have to stay motivated. My time has to be on par. I have to stay consistent. I have to network with others. I have to make sure that I have the right tools to learn these things. I have to network, careers, job boards, and so many things, in the communities, and all the helps that I can get because I need those people to make sure they help me get to where I'm going. It doesn't matter how much people I can get. All I know is I'm going somewhere, and when I get there, I'll know. So this is beginning to sound like a motivational session, but but really, it's just what it's all about, how to help you come from this to this, right? So you have to know those things are very possible. And I really just want to encourage everybody out there that it is possible to get what you want. It just depends on those little things. Remember, there is no secret recipe. There is no seven ways to make money. It's just the little things. That is the secret I have to tell you today. The little things are the things that I do. Those are the small things that matter. Those things, I make sure I work on those little things. They help me become better and a better person in the world. All right, so you got to the point where I'm going to give you a short case study. And I'll be taking your questions shortly. So um, I came from a background with not much. I'm from a developing country. If you don't know, Nigeria is in the western part of Africa. It's a developing country. But uh, uh, aside from being from a developing country, I'm also from a developed family, right? So things were not as the way a lot of people would have it. And uh, same things were not there. I didn't have a formal education even years after I had completed my high school and everything. So I'm telling you this one for you to pity me because I don't pity me. I'm telling you this to encourage you and to tell you that it is possible. So it's not about the situation you are in. It's not about uh, I went from a restaurant cook to a software engineer. I'm not doing this transition grass, you, you know, root to grass, whatever they call these things now. I'm telling you real life. This is what happened, right? I literally started coding on paper. I still have those journals to a date. Keep a journal for yourself. I learned how to type with a dead keyboard. Yes, people, I did. So I'm telling you this for you to know that no matter the circumstance you're in currently, you have more opportunity than somebody else who doesn't even at all. So the odds cannot be against you. You have to win that war. You have to champion that situation. So 
no phones, no laptops, no access to nothing. How did I do it? I met people I remember networking. I met on had phones. There were no smartphones then. They come over and they just have phones. I go over, I scroll. You, you should see Google search engine back then. I just scroll over and, you know, learn what is programming. Okay, how does this work? I see people, you know, typing in the camera like, my God, these guys are gods, right? That inquisitive nature pushed me further and further and further and further. I started learning what this was all about. I started pulling my mind to it. I developed a learning plan, my goal. This week, I want to learn what HTML is. And I started, okay, HTML. Uh, you know, platforms like w 3 still breaks it down into chunks that you can use because don't deceive yourself. You cannot learn everything. This is one thing I've been doing for five years and I've come to realize that you cannot be good in everything. You can just be as good as what you know. What I do now is I work to study and you know implement a particular uh, feature that I need to because you, you can't keep everything in your head. A language like Java has over 42,000 classes. Where do you want to start from, right? So you have to know that information are accessible for you anytime you need them. Just understand the concept, understand the deep concepts on what you're doing and those little things that matter at the end of the day, okay? So I started coding on paper. I'd, I'd really, you know, compile the HTML. Oh, yeah, it works, you know, and eventually I started getting the tags, what is the opac, the tag and elements and all that. That was all how I started. All I required was my dedication, the greed, and the persistence. My Lord, I was persistent. I was dedicated. I did not let anything distract me. You don't find me outside doing necessary thing. If I don't have anybody around or any chores or anything, I just go straight right there into studying. I met people who were in universities. I met people that could help me talk to people that were in positions. I could get textbooks. I still have some of those textbooks in my library today, right? Because I keep them there just to tell me about the humble beginnings. So I, I got textbooks, I read them over and over again. Like I keep telling you people, I went into school and I was really just, I really was just doing re rehearsals in school. I was done with all the curriculums. I had computer science 101, algorithms, Java, you know, OOP, object oriented program. I'd read every single thing. I covered the materials, right? And by the time I was in school, I was just doing what I, I normally do, right? So people, the little details, set you apart from the other people okay so this were my humble beginning the things i do by the way uh for you uh, remember in the start I said that the biggest issue with traditional education is cost which if you believe or if you agree with me it is true if you've gone to university to see the tuition fee alone you probably get scared when you get that so uh the the university i'll tell you about where i got my uh, degree was um, university of the people it is it is a, it's an accredited online university. It has a tuition-free policy. It's as its headquarters in Pasadena, California, USA, and it has a lot of affiliations with offline universities like Medio, NYU in New York, Long Island University. And you know, it is really growing fast, and it has been helping a lot of people. When I got to this university, I was given a scholarship, people. I was given a scholarship. I was really just doing the things that I do. I was just making it happen. I had attended universities in my in Nigeria, in my local country here, but I just wanted more experiences here and there, gathering more experiences. I it was it was just it was just a lot to manage. So I left the one I was doing here in Nigeria to further here in um, University of the People. So that is one place you can go to if you don't have a lot of money. You take computer science course. Yes, the courses are self based. And it actually has this idea of a self taught program idea because you definitely need the one making the effort and discipline to learn one of the biggest challenge for self to program is then yeah you have to face the challenge of discipline. you have to discipline yourself to go through it right so to make sure that you have a discipline someone says your story looks like my brother yeah brother i i celebrate you i'm sure you'll come out strong in whatever you're doing ben Trust me, it is possible, Ben. I've been there. I know if you are in the same situation I am, I've been there firsthand, brother. And I can tell you, it works. I'm, I'm just a testimony, right? So it works, people. You can do the same, okay? Wherever you are, do not let anybody talk you out of it. You can do this. It's possible. You will achieve this, I promise you. I have mentored and, you know, taken a lot of people. Some of them are doing really well now. Trust me, sometimes I look back and I just laugh. And sometimes it almost tears out because, like, I have seen these people go from nothing to something and they're just so grateful really i've mentored them and they they're doing really good now and some of them just be like sometimes i don't understand i just go through it i look at it i call you sometimes i get calls at 
on on godly hours are you awake yeah okay can you help me along yeah let's, i do the best i can for humanity people but trust me you can do this programming is possible you will not be left out in the next five years or few years down the line thank you margaret there will be a lot of requirement for people who are very skilled in programming and then you are going to be the people the jobs of the people on earth are dependent on us problems are dependent on us to give solutions to companies are looking for people like oh you know what we are self taught programmers we matter we have the ability to create solutions for problems right we have the ability to think creatively around a problem and give solutions to them i have personally worked on you know what i call the tech for good initiative i have a lot of projects coming on which i'm going to be releasing in my own country and probably will skate to other parts of the world that will help people to do things that otherwise couldn't for free there is a way you can use tech for good yeah, i heard of a story of a man who used uh you know his knowledge of software engineering to create a platform where people could donate to remote parts of some particular country where people didn't have access to water it is it was not a billionaire it was not a millionaire he just had access to skills tech skills he created a platform told people they ran some market management and that was it people were paying they did not have to be there he just created a solution right he just created a solution out of nothing. He did not have the money, but in about an hour, $100,000 was raised. People were like, what? You mean people don't have access to water in these places? A, a dollar in a thousand places is already $1,000, right? That's just how it works. You just need a lot more people to know about what you're doing, what you need to do. And that's it. You get the attention, you get the money, you get the resources coming in. So that's how it works. So where you are right now might be like you are in the zero level, but trust me, that hero part of you is coming to realization. It's coming to the line of light. So don't stop at where you are. Continue. Move further. I was definitely frustrated as someone wanted to give up, but I kept on furthering. I kept on pushing forward. I kept on doing what I do, doing what I do best. Nothing was making sense to me at some point, but eventually I started seeing the light. I didn't even realize when I got to the light. People were the one telling me that, yo, dude, Look up, the light is up there. You were there, right? I, but I kept going. But you know what? I got there fighting. So that's what you have to do as well. You have to get there fighting. You don't have to give voices to whoever is saying whatever they have to say. But you just have to know that this is what I have in mind. This is what I have to do. No matter what anybody says, no matter what happens, I have to get there and I will get there. So this is what I have for you people. Thank you very, very much for being here today. I thought I could go on and tell you all and all, but I'd have to stop it here and take your questions. I really appreciate you for taking the time out to stay up to this point, for learning with me and for hearing my experiences, and also getting motivated and instructions, information. We will continue this in the event page. My, my DMs are always open. I can set up a call with you if you want any time. We can talk about situations where you are and how to get it. I'm not charging anything for this. It's free, okay? I'm just right there doing the best I can for humanity. And just the only thing I ask of you is pass it on, pass it on. I've had the same help at some point in my life. I'm not going to say I'm a Sigma lone wolf. No, I had help. I asked for help. I had help. Most of the things I have now were bought by people who were, who were impacted by what I did. My first laughter was given to me. I didn't buy it. Somebody saw what I was doing. I was literally helping to create a club where I was teaching programming and stuff. And it was like, you do this? I'm like, yeah. Do you have a laptop? No. Can I get you one? Yes. And that was how I got it, people. That was how I got it. So most of the things you see are karma, people have goodwill. It's real come to you one way or the other. Give a lot of goodwill and don't get it back in return. It's impossible. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time for everything. And uh, it's time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to spam the Q&A. Okay, I'm going to be going through the Q&As for a few minutes and uh, I'll be answering a question. Okay, someone says, I love the presentation design. Thank you, Nari. I really appreciate that. Don't worry, it's going to be yours. Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking with the team. I think they will get it across to you. And uh, as well, this uh, talk is being recorded, so it will get across to you as well. Um, oh, someone says, I miss mentorship. Ben, you can get mentorship whenever you need it. Thank you, precious Margaret. Thank you so much. Ben's got to follow up with me. <laughs> Brother, I see you. Okay, so uh, moving on to the uh, Q&A. Steven says, would it be possible for you to give a concrete examples of why you refer to quick ones would be appreciated? Okay, okay, I get it. Would it be possible to give a concrete example of the why you refer to quick ones would be appreciated? All right, yeah, Steven, uh, your question is very important. The reason why I said why is because 
you see the implementation is good but the why is actually what pushes you to learn um the how if you don't understand let me give you a breakdown why do you eat why do you drink water if you don't understand you could as well be drinking water all your life but you never really understood why you really did it right you just knew how to do it you have to take a glass of glass and put a uh, water in it and just drink it right whenever you feel thirsty but why are you thirsty you have to know the why you have to know down deep to the implementation i can literally explain to you how your computer works from the hardware layer to the software layer it starts from a silicon um, uh, compound material there is the, the, the when, when you're going to uh, uh, discuss about computers you have to get into several subjects like chemistry physics So why is important? I want to do this. I want to do that. Yes, I want to learn how to do this. You will eventually get there. You will know how to do it. But then what? You cannot put all the hows in your head. But just when you know why you do something, how to do it will become second nature. This comes. If I say we need to get this, how are you going to do it? That is why we're doing it to get to that end so that everybody can assess. That is the why. That's a concrete example I'm giving you now. That is the why. The how is what we have to figure out, right? If I use a bulldozer to take the, to the point where I need to take it, I did it. If I use my hand and I work, I did it for I need to come and then we bore this, I did it, right? It doesn't matter how you implement it. It will work whether you do it by the easiest means or you have to understand why the why is how you know what you're doing and who it impacts why you should do it you understand now so uh steven if you if i answered your question um without any other doubts please just give a thumbs up okay All right, so let's move on to the next question, please. As you say, if there is not enough money to pay study and you should work to go with your life, how would you manage your frustrations? Right, uh, brother or sister. So there are always challenges, especially when you don't have money. Money is one of the biggest challenges. Always know studies and do things. How you manage your frustration in life. This is what you need to understand that you're not placed in this world to be alone there are certain people that have been positioned to help you and this is what a lot of people don't know in my life i have been helped by a lot of people and i'm i'm really really grateful so the only way you can move on is to move on eventually that's just it you have to move on there's no other way forward there's nothing that has to take you back you just have to keep going forward you have to Take in the frustration. Listen, the, the pro right now is not suffering. It is rather a training. You are getting somewhere. You have to come to that realization. You have to come to that understanding. Live life. You could be in a better situation. So you have to know that what I'm going through right, right, right now is a training. So I have to get the little details that matter. And through hell, I've been through shit. I can't even share some of those things here because they're embarrassing. But like I one way or the other, the only way for it. So you just have to keep going forward. You will do that for you. You have to do that by yourself. Going forward, the best we can do is carry you forward. Bro. You cannot go forward. This way starts from inside here. You have to go forward mentally for your whole reality. Sophie, I am, but this is this is what I see currently. But this is where I am. but this is what I see mentally you do the work so everything happens here so your situations mentally and when I say mentally I don't say deal with it alone deal with it you can ask for help for advice just ask a millionaire to give you advice worth millions right so you can go to someone who is better people ask for what matters I used to tell people you don't just walk 
up to a rich person and say, give me money. No, the least thing that the least thing they could give you, they probably wouldn't want to give you. You could walk up to a rich person and say, I need your time. I need you to do different way because everybody coming to them is asking for money, but you are not asking for that. You're asking for the simplest thing that nobody actually talks about. Courses, which doesn't have to be yeah? They can give you books that have helped them in one way or the other of their life. So you have to leverage on people. That is all people. At a point where you're down and frustrated, you don't have enough capacity. After what you have to tap into the energy of the people around you, what and please surround yourself with people that matters that can push you forward and they can keep a positive environment and atmosphere around you. It will be all right eventually. Okay, to answer your question. So, my guess is she can go. Can I connect them? Yes, you can. You can, can definitely. I will drop my um link the account right here in the comments, but I think it should right there on the events page i'm not sure um give me one second before i continue with the gray okay that is my link I'm going to make this a pinned comment i hope i got it right okay the next question is from GOT. sorry i don't i don't get the pronunciation correctly GOT. i was very motivated to go for self-taught roof and stuff it's discouraging if i ever will get a job as a self-taught definitely you will get a job as a self taught programmer, now this is what a lot of people do. People come to social media to glass Best job, everything is working out. Is a big I, but they, they have a big uncle somewhere who works at IBM and gave them the job, or their friends or see you somewhere in a startup, right? They just say, Yeah, I got a job, and then you're there getting this, you know, social heartbreak. Oh my god, where am I gonna get my the first job? Is usually the hardest, I tell you. You have to leverage, like I said, you have to leverage. When I started how programming worked and everything, I went into the company of someone I knew. I didn't go for the big companies that here I am. I went to the company of somebody I knew. They did not have a lot of engineers. They did not have a lot of help. I, that was where I went to do the rough one. That built my experience. That, that gave me the experience that engineers are looking for, uh, employers. I mean, are looking for the companies are looking for. I've built it over time by working for people. Sometimes I've had to do. I've done free things. And that's how we got started with, right? I've done people you have to would never last, but you have to. I mean, it won't go forever. At some point, you will have to charge for what you do, but you have to do things free. That's the only way you get people to come to your side. You have them to. You have to win them over to your side by your goodwill. Goodwill matters. If you sit in a lot of goodwill over time, result and produce initial fruits to you. Somebody will just call you from somewhere. I uh, have someone in places where you cannot get to speak on your behalf. I've had people call me from different places, different part of the world, and be like, "Someone give me a contact." Those are the people that I've imparted. Sometimes some of the talk camps I have mentored and facilitated. Some people fly, you know, attend some of those boot camps in different places. They go out. And then tell people about this wonderful guy I met, and you know, I come clean called the positioning of the month. You have to get to number one, or at least number two in the ladder of positioning. Of this ladder, if you if you do something, you could go high up there in the ladder, or you could either come down. So you have to know where you are, and the things that you have to do have to be what nobody else is doing, like giving a rich man a hamper for his birthday, not asking him for money, for example, right? So you have to do the things that lead to. Details that nobody ever does. A rich man is expected to maybe give you something, but you are giving something in return. That person wants to know who you are and why you're doing this. Remember, right? So that is how you can always um, stay motivated. And trust me, you get a job, GRT. You just need to know a lot of people and let them know you do this. You don't have to be uh, with me for a year to know that I do programming. One week with me, you already know what I'm into. It's all I talk about, do, and say every day. So you know this is what I want to do. Sometimes I go into my contacts and I send a blast. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Precious. This is what I do. Because I meet a lot of people over time. On your social media channels, a lot of people who follow you, you follow a lot of people. But these people came when 
two, three years down the line, they don't know what you do. You've posted some stuff about yourself and they've been buried down in the comments, right? So you have to say it again. This is what I do. Keep it in their face, right? I've, I've done this over time. I've gotten positive results. People be like, oh, you do this. Really? Oh, I have a job for you. Oh, I have someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, I have someone you have to be in content with and stuff like that, okay? So these are things. Remember, the very important thing is network. You need to know people and people have to know you. The biggest deals came to me from people that I know. Okay, number the next question is from Nori. Nori says, How to measure self sex as a self taught programmer? Very, very important. I have a lot of people tell me this every time. How do I know when to stop learning? How do I know when to stop this and do that? And how do I know I'm succeeding? The result of your success does not come by you knowing, it comes by people telling you. That's the truth. People will tell you when you've gotten to that point by the amount of people you've been able to impact, by the amount of things you've been able to do with positive results. That's how you know that you've actually gotten to a level. Sometimes I look at the code that I wrote years back and I'd be like, did I really wrote those things? So sometimes um, you, have to, you have to know that even when it seems like you're not progressing, but you are actually making progress. But it might not be visible, but progress is progressive. Progress is progress, no matter how small. You have to be able to come to that reason that you came from knowing absolutely nothing. Sometimes I, I train at boot camps and from day one, I usually like to, you know, feel the impulses of everybody. By the seventh day, everybody's all clickety, clickety on the laptops and be like, oh, okay, uh, sorry, the H1 tag is actually buggy and stuff. I'm like, oh, really? You now know what an H1 tag is. When you came in, literally didn't even know how to turn on a computer, right? So you have to know that you are making progress whether you see it or not, okay? Thank you, Nori. All right, Kendrick is asking, did you ever struggle with tutorial hell? <laughs> yes, I did. If so, how did you get out of it? Did you use self projects? Very, very important. This is one thing that a lot of people get stuck with. Tutorial hell is real, people. It happens. Tutorial hell happens. It is real. You find yourself taking tutorials and tutorials. And you see, YouTube is designed in a way to keep you there. I'm sorry, but the algorithm is designed to keep you there. You watch a tutorial and then the, the author of the tutorial is going to tell you, uh, if you want to learn more about this, there's a link somewhere up there, down here, or sideways, or invisible, find it, it's a puzzle. You have to what? get out of there. You have to leave there. Get enough tutorial to get you set on the path you have to go. That's all you else will come as a result of the effort you're putting. So this is what I... I like to tell people if you learn HTML, you don't have to watch all the HTML videos people about what you just learned. If you learn HTML, make it look real. If you learn CSS, make it the best. So you don't have to always go back to tutorials and learn how to learn something. You have to teach yourself to do the same thing again and do other things. If you just learned HTML, build so many websites as we get the real world experience by watching tutorial. The difference between you watching a tutorial and actually is wide. Okay, so going through the same tutorial and you cannot, you cannot get the same result because what they don't tell you is they have a are scripted. I'm sorry, but it's just out there to get you to view and watch time and so many. things even if you as a lot of people are doing the same thing so you just have to come to that realization that these people are here to give you content and there are genuine people out there giving content but you just also have to know that focus more on the practice of it than the watching side all you need to actually do a lot is simple it's just one seed right that one seed is all it takes there there is there there are fruits and branches and stems and everything you need is just a one tutorial one structure tutorial maybe on youtube me on w3 school about the little concepts that go about it so you can go on and on studying but you never get out of it that doesn't mean you shouldn't study but study when it matters to the point where then you learn that concept again and use that concept over and over and over again by doing more and more projects and that is how by do by learning things you have to come to a, to a situation and the level where you have to stop learning and start doing you have to stop learning and start doing that is how you actually move forward okay james hello one of the main issues i have is network 
working as I'm a shy person and I have a heart. Is there any advice on how to improve working? Yes, there is. There is. Uh, also, like I said, I was an introvert. A lot of problem with them with people. Very shy. I, I was shy so much that even looking to the eyes of my own family and say, uh, this, yeah, what's that bad? More and more comfortable. Why? Because you have to... That, that is also the importance of trust. You. you have to trust, trust people that you tell things about your against you. You have to tell things to people that are trustworthy. You want to do working. What is the biggest problem there is talking to people, getting started, how to read a lot of books like um, by King Ziegler, how to talk to others, how to win and influence others. Then there's another book I read by, I think the same Larry Ziegler is communicate properly or something. I'll book and drop it in the discussion page. But those books really helped me in, you know, get a session going. You just may have realized this. When you go to an event, a lot of people are keeping up a very straight face, like, I don't want you to talk to me. Just back off, right? That's just and say hi. If the person, if you have to, if you, the wall has to swallow you to say hi, just say hi. That's how it gets. We realize that you, you realize what you're doing, try to help you make the conversation go. They're really nice people out there. Like aside people, I've realized that looking at your own self in the mirror, it, it all starts with not appreciate to start appreciating yourself, right? So much that you don't care about how you look, what you look like. You will be able to talk to people. The main reason why you don't appreciate yourself, you have to look into the mirror and tell yourself, I look good. I look great. I look awesome. I look at your practice talking times. I look into the mirror and just start talking to people. Hey guys, how you doing? Oh, look at that trail. there it's beautiful beautiful day isn't it right you cannot talk to people physically online you can do it i started online as well. i could literally talk to you online i wouldn't be offline but over time i became to get comfortable with people from online when there's a video calls and video call learnings you've been talking with as well shy okay so but you have to break through that barrier the only way to do it is to get into the middle of things down there look at people wave at people greet people just start with hi people passenger say hi you laugh you smile you look away if you can just see people and say hi um you get used to it like what really is there because the truth is the people you a lot of shit they're just minding their businesses people have very short time smile they will forget so you just have to do what you have to do and leave. Sometimes I go for events, everybody's shy. I take a step. Hi, how are you doing? How's everything? The best. And another thing that makes you shy and not if you don't handle rejection. So first of all, remember, you have to love yourself. You have to come to the realization where you are beautiful, you're amazing, you're intelligent, you're smart, and you can have systems. Trust me, they can put you anywhere. You can talk to lions, beers, and anything. Okay, James? Thank you very much for that question. Elizabeth, what kind of agenda should be done to remind ourselves to study programming every day? Uh, sometimes I keep a journal, like you said, and uh, I always have, uh, at some point I was given the name, the reminder man. Uh, when I had mobile phones, I had a lot of, uh, like there, there could be an hour that's by you. You wouldn't hear an alarm for something, maybe drink water alarm, alarm talk to, this is alarm, right? To keep yourself in check. Remember, like you said, all your four hours. So it doesn't matter what, how you use it. So of yourself to remind uh, an alarms. So another thing is you can talk to people. How we're doing this by uh, fire. If I'm watching much TikTok scrolling, can you just remind me to stop, right? So you can talk to people. Remember, but everything we do revolves around people. A lot, so you have to do not let people get past you and unity that they can provide you. Okay, so you can 
set up uh, uh, the, the automatic or manual by asking people to uh, remind you to study, to self-study. And I just realized that, okay, um, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And this is not in any way adding to what I want to be. Doc, they study, they do their hard stuff. I just do that to mess up my brain. It, go study. I just do that to you know encourage my brain. Go study. Uh, don't do, don't do this. Don't do this. Go study. Leave this alone. Go study. Why? There will be plenty of time for this. There will be plenty of time to go and do TikTok to do whatever yourself to the point where you have to stop. And sometimes, uh, Elizabeth, you have to give yourself rewards. I don't want to go into I study. Science. Psychology, but I don't want to go much on the psychology of doing that. You have to when you train dogs, for example, is giving them treats when they do something. They know oh, this is what I did. I did a good job. I had a lot of treats, right? Or oh, that man gave me just one trait, right? To so trick your brain to reward. So it's like this reward based system. Reward yourself. Take yourself to a nice treat. You've worked really hard this week. Play a video game. Take the girls out. Uh, walk your dog. Any Thing that makes you happy go to the beach get some fresh hair right the way you can unwind sometimes and some of those things keep you calm One, another thing that helps a lot meditate regularly your mind is clear on what to do you don't often forget things a lot you don't often keep things flying around and say oh god i should have done this but i didn't and also remember keep your agenda very small don't put what you are supposed to do one week in a day and then you didn't achieve it and then you're like oh my god i couldn't do this Sometimes my to-do list don't have very funny to-do list. Wash your your socks. Wash your do your laundry. Uh, go to run. Go and jog. Very little things that looks like they don't matter, but productivity is productivity. At the end of the day, I just want to feel productive, and I'll make sure I do those things. So when I finish them, I go there and check it, and I'm feeling happy about myself about what I've done. So I hope I've really answered that question. Um, if you don't feel too, um, if you, if you have some more doubts, please reach out to me personally. I would like to take it from there. Uh, Vanta BLCK says, how did you find your first real mentor and or a great deaf community along your journey? Yes. Uh, very important. Mentorship is really, really important. Somebody dropped a, uh, very, very, very nice write up in the discussion, the event page in the discussion, David Warner, I think. Really, really great job to you, David. Thank you so much for that. Mentorship is really, really important. There are platforms where you can get mentors right now. Platforms like Code Mentor, right? There are platforms alternative to Code Mentor where you can as well get, but Code Mentor is a good place. And this is not a commercial. I'm not trying to sell Code Mentor. I'm telling you this because it really is a good place where you can actually, somebody has found a mentor at some point in time. So you have to talk to people that know Oh, one of the first things I did was I reached out to people who know how to program. They were better than me. I'd go and walk up to them and tell them, um, how do you do this? I had a friend then. I was lucky to, you know, uh, be around him. He was, he was around doing things, and I would just go on there and tag along with whatever I had to do. What, was I, what, what I was investing was my time. I wasn't investing um um, I wasn't investing money or anything into his life or anything. I was investing time. Sometimes I helped him with what he does. I'm like, oh, I can do this. Can I help you do these beats a little bit? And like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can give me your opinions and everything. And then we do things together, right? So along the way, mentors, remember, mentorship doesn't literally have to be high today. What we're going to be talking about is um, consistency. So see, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, defined. It doesn't have to be like you have somebody teaching you really. A person can be your mentor without them even knowing, right? There are people who have fans. Fans are like mentor, uh, are like mentees to uh, the influencers, right? So some things are taught, like they say, and some things are caught. Many things were caught in my own journey. I did not have a lot of mentors growing up. In fact, the times I wanted to have like a structured environment, I just wanted to have someone teach me. I didn't get enough of that. Remember, I said I didn't have a lot of opportunities. These were the things I was missing out on. By now, it would have been 10x, right? But 
I did what I had to do. I had to motivate myself. I had to become my own mentor. I have to be available for me. I have to be, you know, filling up the gaps for me and myself. And you see, another way to find your first real mentor is by being a mentor yourself. You have to mentor others. If you mentor others, people will bring you into their businesses. They'll tell you about someone they know. Someone always knows someone. So you have to come into their business, teach them, and then you find, you know, uh, you find success in those things that you're doing over time and then eventually you'll meet someone that they know that can introduce you to somebody else and you can find you know um, the little help that you need right so i hope that really helped and uh remember it's just about networking reach out to people there are so many people i reached out and be like can you mention it? that oh my god what an opportunity i'm grateful i would like to right and platforms like exorcism right exorcism the io but a lot of things like i said i wasn't so technical back then and i didn't have access to a lot of things and resources that i do now so i did a lot of manual things i'd reach out to people who were in schools who were in universities who knew a lot better than i did and i'd be like can you teach me this can you give me your notebooks if you can i'll read it by myself and then when i get stuck i'll be like can you tell me why i'm stuck can you tell me this and then over time i started getting the point and I became a more um, self-disciplined person. I disciplined myself to learn something, but never shy away from asking for help when I need. Giotti, I'm seeing you again. So do you think it's possible to land a job in the current job market? Oh, definitely. It is very possible to land a job in the current job market. Just that the uh, mainstream way of doing it probably is uh, not what works for everybody that's the truth a lot of people go into this way and think you just have to get your cv set off and just apply to the jobs that doesn't work for everybody it's the truth it doesn't work for everybody it works for some people it doesn't work for everybody maybe for some reasons that you don't know that those people have access to so you just have to try everything in job application there are two models that i've learned about the push and the pull what most people focus on is the push model the push model this describes the you know process of you reaching out to employers applying to jobs you're, you're pushing yourself to them they're trying to get to know you by you doing the hard work the other part is the pool model well you have to be the one they come to when one very um, very important feature is linkedin you can actually go to a platform like linkedin and change your location don't tell them i told you this <laughs> change your location to the country where you want to get a job employers in that um, uh, location will reach out to you through LinkedIn ads, through LinkedIn search, and so many things. Recruiters are always looking for people. That's one thing I've come to learn. When I changed my location to US one time, I had hundreds of messages. I wish I could show you. I could I could just keep scrolling, never ends, right? I was having um, messages from Amazon, from ByteDance. ByteDance, by the way, is the company that owns TikTok. So uh, that was how I got into so many interviews with those fine companies like Uber, Palantir, ByteDance, and you know so many like, uh, Google, Facebook, uh, Uber, I think I mentioned that, right? So um, your location on LinkedIn can change. And when you meet recruiters reaching out to you, tell them, actually, I'm not in this current location, but I'm open to um, remote roles or relocation support for the things that I have to do. And eventually, they'll be willing to help you in getting uh, that job that you require. So remember, it all starts with networking. There is a website I saw that also provides references. Remember, uh, one of the things I said in the beginning part of the talk is um, talking to people by going to their DM. So you go to a company a website on LinkedIn, for example, and you look for the employees that are active on LinkedIn, right? They have activities on LinkedIn. You go and reach out to them. Hi, I, I love what you do. I'm really excited. I'm a prospect to this company. I would love if you could give me any advice that I can get. I really like a position. And a lot of people are so happy to help. That's the truth. They're so happy to help. So you reach out to them. They will give you the information you need. Sometimes it could be through groups. You can do it through dev groups. Uh, hi, is there anybody here that has uh, an information about a recruiter needs? I really need a job. Do not be shy to ask for help. Do not be shy to ask for help. People reach out to you and, oh, hi, there's a solution. There is an information. There is this place. There is that place. This is what you need to do. So, yes, it is possible to get a job in the current job market. But trust me, start looking out for ways that people don't naturally do. So maybe if you've been applying for 
years and years like I did back then, you have to change your strategy. You have to know people now because the people that you know will influence your life. They will influence your life. The people you know are the influences you have. There is something called social capital. The social capital is the amount of people you have. It's like having capital, which is fiat money, but social capital, depending on the amount of people you know, the quality of the people you know can influence your life so greatly. So yes, it is possible, Giotti. Thank you. And I'm seeing Nori as well again. How did you become such a good speaker as an introvert? Very good question. I um, had a lot of opportunities um, to um, give talks at different places. I would call them local events. I'd have maybe an audience of two or three people. And you see, the truth is you don't require experience to teach someone or to become a good speaker. You require the ability to just learn what they don't know and teach it to them. That's that's all you require. You just need to know what you don't know. That pretty step ahead of them, right? You just need to go research. I, I met one time a guy, and he was really good at what he does and everything. And I asked him, you go for events, you talk in places, you travel and all that. What do you do? He says sometimes he doesn't know it all. He just prepares the speech. Sometimes he asks somebody prepares it. I'm like, oh, can you check this out? Is it good and everything and all that? And then he says, um, oh, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? And then he gets everything prepared, right? So uh, you talk to people. The only way you become... Um, a good speaker is by talking to people. Give yourself the opportunity to make mistakes. The only time you're allowed to make mistakes is right now. You cannot get to the level where you are speaking to an audience of a thousand plus people. That is not where you want to go and make a mistake. You want to make a mistake when you're talking to an audience of 10 people. So give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Give yourself the time and uh, the platform to make mistakes. Yes, you will make mistakes. People will laugh at you. People will boo you, whatever. It's fine. It's all part of the story. Like I am telling you mine now, right? I'm telling you mine now. So you will be telling yours in the future, uh, actually, when I was about to become a keynote speaker. Um, uh, literally, I had to talk to a group of 10 people. There was a time I had a friend. He was traveling to Italy to give a, a speech at uh, PyCon. PyCon in Italy, and then what he did was he ca called a couple of us, his friends, and said uh, he wants to do a demo speech, and he gave uh, about 60 minutes, an hour, and he says he wants to give a demo speech before he eventually travels, and his visa was, you know, assigned and valid and all that. So he, he went through the whole talk with us, and then we were able to give feedbacks. Oh, you did this, you did that, and he collected those feedbacks, you know, heartfully. So you can do something like that. Come up, there, there are always people you know, people that can listen to you. You call a couple of your friends, guys, I would really appreciate the time. I just want to give a little speech. I don't know if you guys are willing. And um, uh, uh, I want you to tell me, uh, you know, informations and suggestions, be, be playing with me. That is what I say. Remember, you have to be able to accept rejections. I do not fear it. I, I applied to Udacity 20 times. One time I was applying to Udacity for a job and then I was applying the first time I was rejected, the second time I was rejected. I applied 20 times. When I applied it 20 times, somebody reached out to me and like, who are you? What do you want? What do you need? I'm like, if you, I keep telling them in the emails I sent, I said, if you don't apply, if you don't reply to me, I'll send you another one. I will fill all your email servers. I'll use Hotmail, Gmail, and everything. I need this job right now. Do you know eventually they reached out to me like, we want to give you the job? But eventually they gave me an offer, which I then rejected. But what I just tried to achieve was that I won't stop at that rejection. I won't say no. Even when I get rejections, I reach out to the recruiter and be like, okay, what did I do wrong? How can I make it better? Because I'm going to apply again. And they be, they laugh, and but yet they will give you the information that you require that, oh, okay, you should have done this. Some people tell you genuinely, actually, we found somebody else with the job. I'm just telling you this, but uh, it wasn't that your information wasn't good and everything, but we found somebody else and we want to move further with that person based on location or whatever the situation might be. So it's not always about the rejection. It's not always about you not knowing. It's not, it's not about you. It's about them sometimes. Sometimes they're not really being honest with you. Some of the informations you get back when you apply to jobs are automated. So sometimes if you say that you didn't do your best, no. ATS, they, the robots are talking back to you. They're not being honest with you. So if you push further to get information about why you didn't get this, somebody will tell you that it's not about you. It's about the company. We found somebody else. Remember, I told you 60% of the job 
regulates inside the company internally. It's internal business, right? So that is just how it works. So if you want to become a good speaker, you have to speak to people. You have to let people know you want to do this. You have to talk. You have to feel. I've seen so many people that are singers now. They sing beautifully well. And they started when we all laughed at them and says, bro, drop this. This is not your calling. You can never do this. And the person keeps going and say, okay, thank you for your feedback and everything. Accept rejection. Learn how to accept rejections, right? Love yourself, accept rejection. That will solve a lot of problems for you. And then when you go out there reaching out to people, it is their problem to think anything they want to think about you. You know what you think about yourself. You know you're good, you're healthy, you're beautiful, you're talented, you're amazing. And you just go out there and win. If anybody says otherwise, that is their problem. They have that problem to do it. I keep telling people, if you reject me, that's your loss, right? Because I would have been a success, you know, such a story in your companies. Um, roadmap or journey so you have to come to that realization that it is not about you it's not about you it's about the people sometimes so um i think we've answered all the questions if i didn't answer you to your satisfaction please uh just reach out to me if you have more questions no problems if you take years i will answer all your questions <laughs> if we need to set up a call for that i will do as well but um i think we should um come to okay yes thank you so much elizabeth says no more question Let's give him a chance to read that stuff. It's excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys, your time, and for listening and for hearing me share my experience. Not doing this to tell you I'm um, no, nothing like that. I'm doing this to encourage you and to motivate you to go further, to go for that thing you want to reach. I am still reaching out to the stars. Trust me, just in case you, this is what a lot of people don't tell you. A lot of engineers come out there telling you they're good, they're that. Nobody wants to be vulnerable. That is the area where I come in. I am vulnerable. I am so vulnerable. That is your problem. Deal with it. But I am so vulnerable because, you know, deeply, deep down, they wish they were like you. They wish they could be open because when you're vulnerable, you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to think about. Whoever is trying to keep a high profile is the one that has to bother about whoever, whatever anybody thinks about them, right? So you have to keep a very, very low profile. Because people will elevate you. You don't have to be elevated. People will do it naturally. It just happen by yourself. You don't have to come up and be like, this is what I am. No. Thank you so much for your comments. It is really beautiful. I uh, really appreciate the time and effort for coming out to be here. Uh, some of you are dropping some comments. Uh, frankly, amazing. Thank you so much, Vanta Bielseke, Elizabeth, Kendrick, and every other person. Jyoti, yes, Nari. Uh, I think I can remember some of your names. So um, also James, thank you for your questions. Manuel, Steven, I don't know if you're still here, but thank you for your question. And uh, oh, oh, I think there are some comments here. I believe documentation is usually more extensive. Video tutorials usually teach you what you need to know. Yeah, this is a very, very, thank you so much, Derek. This is a very, very important aspect. Some people learn with video, some people learn with text. Find whatever works for you, find whatever works for you and do it. For me, video works. I could read an article, but video works best for me. You know, there, there is a learning aspect. I, 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 um, I recommend everybody to take this course, learning how to learn. It's just actually a course. It teaches you some psychological aspect of learning and how you learn best with, you know, uh, video contents, uh, pictorial contents, and text-based contents. So please, everybody try and, you know, take some time and um, take that particular course. It's free, I think. Documentations of video tutorials, how do you choose? documentations when I need to do what is not on the mainstream. Because the truth is, what is on the mainstream is taken from the documentation and they bring it to you and, you know, break it down in a very simple, um, you know, uh, digestible way. So you can go to documentation when you need to do what is not available. So otherwise, I just do video tutorials. That's for Nick. I can see some of you are asking a question in the chat, please, if you have questions. Uh, although we're done now, you could have dropped them in the Q&A. Thank you so very much for your time. Uh, yes, Vanta Blesse K says, learn how to learn was one of the best courses I've taken. Yes, it was the same one for me as well. It was the same one for me as well. I really love that course. It really opened my mind to so many things. And one last thing, <laughs> do not focus too much on programming. All the areas of it, uh, you can notice the very, different aspect and that's because i have worked so much even by the challenges and everything i've worked so much develop i'm not giving room for chances i'm giving myself the opportunity to grow in all areas 
So don't focus too much. Like, life is all about tech. Sometimes you keyboard lifestyle. <coughs> Go out there and uh, do what matters. Other areas of life has to be improved. How to talk to people out in the internet had gone for and figure metal law of people physically, you know. there you have to strengthen that area of your life then other contents because some people in, in contact with me and tell me um i just got a job business why would someone say they can pay you ten thousand dollars who is sponsoring the company so you need to understand at that level technical documentations you need to understand what currently do have to understand economics how startups are i run how they're developed what what it company does how they do it so do extensive research learn about the 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 box just things the the the, 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 the sky is not your limit it is ahead and you can whatever you can pick up along the now i've seen a lot of developers doing the same thing i'm telling you they're learning other areas about their finance because you can how do you manage your money right learn about finance management because You will learn it in the street. You don't, you don't, except you go to a structure matter because they're part of your life. Your life circle around technology and many things. That is why you could have something to tell you that, that people are like, oh my God, you know things. Because I leave, I became a human being first before I program. Okay, uh, thank you so much for your time. I have to go and uh, freshen up. So uh, thank you so much for joining me from all parts of the world, Code Mentor, and I will hopefully be having an, an another one, and I'll be preparing something for you and points and how to improve yourselves. I thank you for the opportunity to be here to learn. So how out there, people learn, um, grow participate and uh yes thank you so room open if you want to chat with yourself get to know each other remember network uh that will be possible we'll talk with the team and see how we can get in uh, uh, uh what's it called the slides are called of thank you so much elizabeth nick venter bsk ross